Hey guys, so I'm just doing some practicing right now, and I figured, you know, in keeping up with my typical laid-back video style, that I'd share some of what I'm working on with you guys. And I'm not going to go into too much detail right now, but if you're a jazz enthusiast like I am, chances are you'll find some enjoyment in this. Okay, so what I'm working on here is the Miles Davis song, Hand Jive, which is off of his Nefertiti album. And if you're familiar with a lot of his work, chances are you know this song. Um, and if not, you can go and listen to it. Um, so, I've never heard any other recording of this song other than this original studio recording. I've never seen anyone play it live. Um, and I haven't found any music for it either, so I thought it was a cool one to learn. I mean, I've always liked the song too, so. What I want to show you today is this little chord melody arrangement I came up with for the head. I'm going to play it, and then I'll briefly just kind of go over it a little bit. Just give you an idea of the rough sort of chord structure. Show you a little bit of what I did and not go into too much detail, but if you can kind of see where I'm coming from, then maybe you can do your own things. Um, and I also started transcribing some of Miles' solo, so I'm just going to play what I have of it so far and break it down like a little bit. Again, not too much detail, but just talk about some simple things. So hopefully you can take something out of it, okay? Um, so first, the melody. So this is a little arrangement I came up with. sloppy but it's all good again like I'm literally working on this stuff right now so the process is all happening for me too in this moment okay so this song uh, is very modal especially in the solos but even in the uh, the head too um, and but again in the solos you'll see really it's all kind of focused around a D flat tonic center like D flat 7 and He's playing around with different modes and different chromatic notes and different things with some of his lines, but um, it's that consistent tonic center which kind of pulls it all together. Um, but there's a little bit of chord motion in the uh, melody too. So um, it's starting like, okay, so it's D flat seven, but for most of it, I'm hearing this D flat seven with a flat 13. So this kind of sound, okay. I also, I play the chord like this too. Okay, and there's a couple of modes from the melodic minor scale that have a dominant with a flat 13. One of them is the Mixolydian flat 6. Again, this is in the key of D flat. Um, also, the altered scale. Okay, um, there's another dominant mode from this melodic minor scale, the Lydian dominant, which also gives a dominant sound, but it doesn't have the flat 13, but he also pulls from this scale in some of his solo because it's another dominant flavor. Okay, and again, it, it's all consistent because it's all centered around this, and you'll see that really more clearly when we go through the solo. But for this little chord melody thing, so it starts in this D flat 7 sound, but I'm starting with this little, um, sort of voice leading counterpoint type thing where I have this like contrasting second melody happening underneath it. Okay, so it just makes it interesting to have that underneath. Okay, then I have just the melody still in the same thing. So I'll just play that chord to supplement it. Okay, then now it goes to a D flat seven sharp nine. So this is a different dominant chord, but it's a very different sounding one from the other one, so it kind of changes up the sound of it a little bit. Okay, then it goes up a half step to D7 sharp 9, then it goes into this. And that's like a B flat um, Lydian augmented type sound. So. Okay, and then it answers that with this, it goes to B minor chord and when it goes to this chord all the chords up to this point have had an even sort of harmonic rhythm but this B minor we haven't really been talking about the harmonic rhythm of these chords but 
this cord is only held for three measures, which is an uneven amount of measures, so it kind of throws off the form a little bit and makes it interesting. Okay. And then after that, it does something where I'm hearing it, this is kind of like a G major sound. And then it goes from G major down a half step to G flat major. So harmonically speaking, it's kind of got this little chromatic tension and release thing happening where it's like G and then G flat. So it would be like, uh, yeah, like. And this whole thing, I mean, I'm kind of using some interesting chords with some passing chords and stuff in between that have some nice voice leading, but I'm just thinking G flat major for that whole thing because um, the voice leading with the chords in between may not necessarily be so clearly G flat major, but it's all functioning within that sort of tonal center, okay? So the voice leading kind of makes it sound good. Okay? So that's the basic structure of the head, all right? And then for the solo so far, I have this. Now, I don't know like when they're playing over this, if they're just kind of thinking of like a D flat jam and there isn't really any choruses or not. I don't really know what they're thinking or what they were thinking, but um, I'm kind of seeing this of what I have so far as going a little bit past the first chorus. And the only reason why I sort of think of it as going into another chorus, you'll see, is because there's a point in the solo where he plays this line where it's not even necessarily playing the melody exactly, but it almost sounds like a variation of the melody, so I'll let you know when it gets up to it. So this is what I have of the solo so far. And yet, if you know the song, you'll probably recognize this because I'm not playing it with a recording right now. So. was where it's like the top because that kind of sounds like the melody and then answers it with this okay and then I have this one last line that I got in the solo um, okay so it's a little rough again but I'm still playing around with it myself all right so Really what I'm thinking of this, if I were to take something out of this, even myself, like what am I learning out of this transcription is, like I said, it's a very modal thing. Um, so what I'm kind of doing as I'm going through these lines is I'm just kind of taking them fragment by fragment and I'm really just trying to hear them over a D flat dominant sound. And this is just the root third and seven. The whole song kind of has, for the most part, that flat 13 vibe, not necessarily the whole time, but I'm not even putting that extra note in there. I'm just really hearing everything over this. So what I'll do is I'll play a line and then hear it over this chord. Okay, see how it fits over that? So basically what I'm saying is if you want to take stuff from this solo, you can take individual lines and just kind of see them as dominant lines that you can obviously add to your own vocabulary and make variations of, but the idea is to really understand or hear how these things work over that particular chord and see like maybe what notes he's using, how he's picking important notes that are part of the melodies that he's playing, but he has little chromatic passing things in between that is almost just like filler, but it rhythmically sounds good. So even like with this first line, you know, to me, what I'm hearing is the important line, uh, notes would be like, you know, okay. seven All right now this next line it's got some chromatic stuff where it's almost like a d minor or d sound instead of d flat uh. 
even the last part. Right, so all these little fragments, you can see how they fit over this D flat. Even this next line is great. And that's cool because he doesn't even play the root. He actually uses, um, he actually uses all the notes around the root. But not, and that's actually the major seven, which doesn't even work uh, normally over a dominant chord, but it works in passing. Okay, so it's really cool things that he's doing there. All right, um, then he's doing this thing. So kind of borrowing from A flat minor, which is related to D flat seven. It's like it's companion minor almost. He's using a lot of chromaticism, but um, it's the, where he's starting and stopping to kind of define these nice chord tones. So, landing on the seven there, okay? And then he has this line, which I'm seeing that as like an F minor type thing. And F minor relates in an interesting way to a D flat seven. It still works over that. Okay, now he's going from the Lydian dominant scale, this scale, he's using that with some neighboring tones in the beginning of this line. So that's another cool line because um, it's again the fact that he's starting with this chromaticism. I'm sorry. Okay, so great ideas to use over a dominant chord here. Um, and then the last part, okay, and that's cool, starting on the 7th and then going to the sharp 9, okay. Then he's at the top, or what I think of as the top of the next chorus where, again, the actual melody is, but he does this thing where it's like, So you see how it's similar? And also from a phrasing point of view, that sort of pre-bend way that he's doing it. He's, I'm actually bending up to the actual note, but I'm doing it that way so I can lower in pitch. Cause that's what it sounds like on the recording. So even that little bend thing alone, it's a great little phrasing thing to take. And then he's answering it with this. It works. It's so logical after that part, and it's just rhythmic and it's simple, but it sounds great. Okay. Then the last line that I have here is similar to that other sort of chromatic line I had, where again it almost seems like it's starting in D minor and then kind of resolving. You know. Then doing this last little chromatic thing. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I know I'm sure some of you guys may have some difficulty breaking down some of these lines. Um, I don't put any diagrams up or nothing like that, but, you know, I apologize for that. It's just, I just like sharing this stuff with you guys. Um, um, hopefully you can take something out of it, but yeah, like, look how um, a lot of this stuff, because this is a really modal piece, um, so if you're looking for some lines to kind of take where you can use them over a static progression, like something like this, this is a cool little solo to look at. Um, so yeah, I hope you, uh, enjoyed that.